if you have full bars, why don't you act like it? God, phone's heating up. Yeah, I've been there, and I know a lot of people who have been in the exact same situation. But why does using 5G have to be like this? I mean, the latest broadband network shouldn't be slower than the last and heating up phones to the point where it's painful to hold. Well, to understand why 5G is atrocious, we need to know how the different types of 5G work. And that's right, there are different types of 5G. Three, in fact. Low band, mid band, and high band, which is also known as millimeter wave. Starting with low band, it covers the lower end of the new ranges. For these frequencies, it only really a small improvement over 4G, but more efficient and slightly faster. This is because it's designed to piggyback off existing 4G infrastructure so it travels long distances. But it's not replacing 4G, at least not yet. Midband is the same way too, even though it covers a more advanced signal waves, it's not a monumental jump in performance. And while it's faster, it has a smaller range. The same exact trade-off applies to millimeter wave, except crank to 11. I'm talking about speeds on a cell phone that well surpasses the gigabit mark, nothing short of a modern miracle, but you lose connection if you simply turn the wrong direction. And yeah, the range on the hottest technology is that fragile. Speaking of being hot, it has caused heating issues for just about every device featuring 5G. Why? It's actually pretty simple. Your phone is just processing a lot more information faster than before. And while the chips of our phones have been getting better at chewing through this information, they've been guzzling down more and more power year over year. And sadly, the cooling solutions in phones haven't really evolved for about 40 years. I mean, look at graphics cards. Those beasts have been getting more and more power hungry with each generation. The cooling solutions have been literally growing to adapt this change. Phones, on the other hand, haven't. And at this moment, there are no feasible solutions available. Which sucks because the only thing really holding us back from even faster speeds are phones' thermal barriers. Good news, there are several research groups working on new cooling solutions, but they're mostly academic theory papers right now. Until then, I think I'll stick with using 4G. If you want to know more about what it's like daily driving a phone with 5G, check out this review by Taylor on the Note 20 Ultra. And I'll see you next time.